Good afternoon, everybody. It is two minutes past the hour. I am going to start the webinar and start the recording. Just a couple of things. Please do adjust the audio to the bottom left of your screen. And any questions or comments, please do put them in the Q&A and I'll answer those at the end. Please do not use the chat box. Uh, please do use the uh, Q&A. So welcome and Happy New Year for those of you looking at this on a recording. It is the 10th of January. My name is Kerry James and I'm going to take you through the second part of this series on the Smart Exit Blueprint. So I hope you can see my screen and my marker here or my mouse. Uh, this is me and I am a business owner. I've got my own business. I've got a franchise with uh, Action Coach uh, and these are uh, some of my members of my family dressed up in a Christmassy fashion. Uh, I've got my own dreams, my own bucket list, etc. And that links into what my passion is about, which is about helping business owners do three things really. Firstly, understand the current value of their business. Secondly, to grow the value of that business, understand what are the factors that grow the value of that business. And thirdly, to plan for a smart exit. So some figures came out to relatively recently about it was from 2018 in terms of births and deaths of businesses. And in the Northwest, the interesting part was that whilst we're right up there with London in terms of births, we were the worst in the whole of the UK for deaths. So 14% of businesses die every year. So uh, business owners uh, have got a pretty rough time, really, even though they make huge amounts of investment of time and energy and finance in creating jobs and driving industry. Um, they rarely get a reward on that investment. There's only 20% of businesses sell. So that's my passion to help business owners uh, spend less time at work, uh, which in the short term or medium term means growing the value of that business and then getting some rewards at the end. So that's just a little bit about uh, me. This is me with uh, John Warrillow, just referring to a couple of sources for today. Uh, John Warrillow started the Value Builder System uh, about eight years ago now, based on his experience of buying and selling businesses, also his experience of running a market research agency, exploring the uh, insights behind small to medium enterprises, and all that fed into his book, uh, Built to Sell. Um, and some of uh, today's input is based on that, some of it's based on my expertise, and some of it is based on uh, some of the thinking around Action Coach in particular driving the profits of your business. But that's not the uh, focus of today. That will be the focus of uh, a future webinar. Uh, so the Value Builder System has uh, got two elements to it, really. And today is very much focused on the second of these elements. The Value Builder Score uh, is really asking the question, how much is your business worth today? And what do you need to do to grow the value of that business? So. Uh, the fourth webinar in the series will look specifically at those eight factors that drive value in the business. That's the first part of the value builder system. The second part, which we'll be spending more time today on, is about the pre-score, so personal readiness to exit. So value builder is about, is your business ready? And the pre-score uh, is about the business owner. Are you, as the business owner, ready to exit your business with no regrets? And that's really what we'll be looking at in a little bit more detail in the next 25 minutes or so. So just to put that uh, today's session, which focuses in on personal readiness and mindset into the context, uh, you have access to the recording of the first webinar. And after today, we will be looking at how to assess and drive the current value focusing on the annual profit. Then we'll be looking at the value builder engagement to allow you to grow those factors that uh, enable growth in your business. And then we'll be looking at alternative exit strategies and negotiating an exit in subsequent webinars. But the focus of today is personal readiness. So part one, we looked at some of the key fundamentals of your business, finance, time management, sales, marketing, systems, team leadership, etc. We touched briefly on mindset, and that really is the focus of today. So exploring a little bit more detail on a business owner's mindset and how important that is in preparing a business uh, for sale. And I ask you to judge yourself against each of those factors. Not gonna dwell on that. Um, 
this was simply to point out that the first webinar was really about things you should be doing in your business to make sure the fundamentals are in place. Today's focus is much more about the business owner, who they are, what are their skills, values, beliefs, etc., and how they might need to change as they move away from being a business owner, move into doing other things and moving into retirement. Um, and that is all linked in this formula for success that whatever you want to have in life or whatever you have now or whatever you want in five years time is driven by those two different elements and just a bit more detail on that as i said uh, the b element who you are uh, is driven by skills belief values your identity and a lot of that is uh, linked to your daily environment so changing offices for example uh, can have a big impact in terms of who you are how you operate but today's focus really is on identity and how closely linked is your identity to the fact that you are and have been for a long time potentially a business owner uh, so that's the focus for today so one of the elements i want to explore a little bit is this idea that lots of business owners say they're never actually going to ever leave their business now the truth of course is that whether you leave your business before you go to the grave or after you go to the grave one day you will be leaving your business but lots of the mindsets of current business owners can fit into one of these two non-exclusive categories this is some research from, from the states and i think you can imagine some people have the attitude and the belief you know, they spent a huge amount of time and energy building up this business. It really is my baby. I'm very protective of it. And they still enjoy running the com company. So it's very much about maintaining the status quo without recognizing or realizing that in the medium to longer term, at least, then other issues are going to come into play, such as health challenges, etc. So it's understandable um, that some people have the it's my baby approach, um, but it's not really helpful in terms of um, recognizing what you need to do and how you need to change if you're going to spend some time away from your business with a happy retirement with enough money and enough time to do what you really want and then other people quote that they don't want to exit today um, or would only exit if their financial security were assured because the business is currently giving me the lifestyle i want and therefore i don't want to leave so both of those perspectives uh, have challenges in in relation to developing a business and exiting a business uh, and keeping yourself happy and having no regrets having gone through that, that process but at the same time linking this into retirement planning and financial planning and doing all the things you want to do on your bucket list or your dream list so let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail and i guess what we're doing is for the two previous uh, if you like kind of attitudes it's my baby or it's, it's a lifestyle kind of perspective it's very much the mindset of living for today and what we would encourage in relation to a happy finale here in terms of growing the value of your business and exiting the business in a way that you can afford to do what you want to do in your retirement uh, we are encouraging a mindset shift from live for today to plan for tomorrow. So live for today is very much based on current income, as opposed to thinking about how much does the, the business need to be worth in order to give me what I want in the longer term. Uh, similarly, basing success on the optimization of the value of the business in the future, rather than what it gives me today thinking about the business in relation to building a valuable asset rather than having something that gives me my financial requirements for, for today. And you know, if, if your exit is, I'm gonna die at my desk, then that has all sorts of um, challenges in terms of uh, plans and uh, all sorts of risks if the proverbial bus comes along. And uh, if you are still integral to the day-to-day -day running of the business, then of course that vastly reduces the value of the business. So. The mindset is linked into the practicalities of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis with your business. 
In terms of evaluation, then those living for today would look at a mathematical equation based on historical financial performance or current financial performance. That's why that's one of the factors. It's certainly uh, only one amongst uh, eight main factors. So planning for tomorrow recognizes that there are a range of different drives of the business. So two different companies, the same size, the same industry, the same profits, the same revenues can be worth very, very different amounts. Um, against those different factors so it's really worth thinking about long term and, and the different operational drivers of value and then we'll come on to explore more this idea of income replacement value as being one way of getting very very specific to say how much do i need my, to sell my business today in order to maintain my current lifestyle versus what i guess and estimate this business to be worth based on what it currently gives me. So we'll explore that in a little bit more detail. So part of this is really about thinking about your current mindset. And maybe not as obvious as it might be to, to people is that as and when we move towards our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, recognizing that planning for retirement and linking in the finances from the business with your personal finances makes more and more sense. But the reality is 70% of people don't actually have a specific idea about when they're going to retire. And as opposed to the general population, of course, with business owners, it's much more likely that more of their savings are going to be tied up in the business rather than invested, invested in personal assets such as property or pensions, for example. Um, so thinking about how your retirement will be funded, what is the role of the income from the business in that, or the sale of the business in that, uh, is, is a very important part of, of, of planning. So I work closely with M&A people, but also financial advisors to think about what the business is worth today, what does it need to be worth in the future, and how do you need to add to that value that you're getting from the business from your personal assets. What is the most important uh, valuation uh, method? Well, you may have your uh, own views on this, you know, the book value from the balance sheet. Market value is really the arguably the only really important one, i.e. what somebody will actually offer you for the business. Capitalization of earnings, discounted cash flow or net present value as it might be called would be a very common way of valuing a business. So in other words, converting all the future cash flows of the business into today's value to work out a, a net present value. Uh, asset accumulation, accumulation might be worth or more relevant to some business than others. Liquidation value, uh, obviously not ideal. If uh, the business owner has to stop running the business for whatever reason, then a certain percentage of the current, current assets uh, and a lower percentage of the fixed assets will be used as a way of measuring the liquidation value, not ideal. Uh, and the most important one, arguably, from the business owner's perspective is this idea of the income replacement uh, value. So let's talk a little bit about more about what, uh, what that means and why we believe that's quite important to think about. So income replacement value is about what you need the business to be worth in order to maintain your current lifestyle. Of no interest to your acquirers, but nevertheless very, very important to business owners. So let's just think about a scenario here. So the scenario is, um, and I've not graphed the actual business here, so the, the scenario is that there's a single owner of one business, the business turns over a million, and has a net profit margin of 15%. In other words, has an annual net profit or EBITDA in US terms of 150,000. So 150,000 for any uh, asset to think about what you need to sell that at or how would you need to multiply that up in order to maintain that income, then that 150,000, if you, if you, you know, three to 5%, per year might be a reasonable range that the financial advisors recommend. So 
if we're saying that we would take 5% out of that business every year to maintain our £150,000 per year, that would mean the business needed to be sold for £2 million today in order for you to take 5% of that per year to provide you with what you've currently got, which is the £150,000. Now, the reality of the current value of the business is that if you are making £150,000 per year, then the average multiple of net profit across a range of businesses, and this is data that comes from the Value Builder system, about 50,000 businesses have been through that, is in the range of 3.5 to 4. 3.75 is the average. So say we said took four times 150,000 pounds. So the current value of the business is going to be about 600,000 pounds. That's what you could sell it for today. In other words, there's a gap. Uh, there's a gap of 1.4 million pounds. So what are the options? Well, the option is to sell today and reduce your lifestyle. Not very attractive. The other, uh, the other option is to keep on going and never sell at the current value of the business. The third explores what assets you have outside of the business, whether that's property or, or pensions, for example. You know, can you make up that shortfall with your personal assets? But as I said before, the business owners, they've often invested a lot of their uh, funds in the business over the years. So in many cases, it might leave you as the only option is to grow the value of the business. Uh, and that's what the focus of the next two webinars will be, how to actually grow the value of the business. Uh, maybe uh, maybe obvious, but uh, hopefully somewhat enlightening to recognize that that's an important way of valuing the business from the business owner's perspective and what the options are if, as, as many people would have, uh, if there is a gap between the current value of the business and the income replacement value. So somewhat of a, uh, I guess, a worrying statistic here is that most businesses actually, re sorry, business owners regret, regret their exit. So one year, this is a study by uh, the Exit Planning Institute and by PwC, and 75% of business owners actually regret their exit one year after leaving, and only 5% are happy. Quite a, quite a surprising percentage. Let's explore a little bit about, more about why we think that might be. And this introduces the idea of an assessment for where business owners are now in order to judge um, where they are now and what they need to do to increase the likelihood of them being satisfied a year after their exit. So let's have a look at the four main elements within this. The, the first one is about future vision. So in this, we talk about the balance between push factors and pull factors. So what is pushing you to leave the business? Maybe it's uh, health reasons or other family uh, constraints or opportunities. Or um, maybe there's uh, some frustrations you've got currently in the business. So those would be the push factors. The, the pull factors would be more like what do you want to spend your time when you've got much more time. Do you want to sail around Britain or sail around the world or take up another new hobby or learn a new skill or go traveling or tick off your bucket list? Those are lots of elements that create a pull. And it's really important uh, for business owners to specify and think about how they're going to spend their spare time once they've moved away from the business. That's the first element. Second element, structuring flexibly. So there's various ways of leaving and exiting a business, of course. One is taking a, a, a clean break and, and, and selling the business. There are alternatives whereby you might still be involved full-time for a specific amount of time, maybe two to three years, or maybe you become the chairman, uh, or some sort of role which involves some sort of consultancy for the business, maybe one, two, three days a week on a part-time basis. But the, the key point here is we would recommend, particularly in the context of a negotiation to sell a business, being about a two-year process, to keep options open. So you might be tempted by the idea of, of leaving on day one of your sale, but if you keep open the idea of staying on the business with one to two years, then that's going to increase the number of potential buyers in your shortlist, potential buyers that are interested, and therefore increase the competition, therefore increase the value of 
your business. So how open-minded are you to the various options that you've got in terms of your exit? Third one is about personal detachment. It comes back a little bit to the push and pull factors. But if you've been in your business for 30 years, if your name's over the door, if you are working 80 to 100 hours a week, uh, the reality is, if you le left that business today and had all day to do other things, that might be quite a mental and physical challenge. So do you have a healthy lifestyle and plenty of interests outside of work or not? Uh, and therefore assessing this level of personal connection or personal detachment from the business is an important part of thinking about where you are now and what you maybe need to do between today's date and your planned exit date. And then finally, thinking about the relationships and the involvement that you have with your team. Many business owners really worry about how they're going to manage the communication around the exit associated with their team members. And there's, there's no easy or obvious answer here. It clearly depends on the, the specific circumstances about who you tell, when you tell them. But it's important to kind of lean into this issue, address this fear, and try to look at it from the point of view of your team members and maybe creating options and alternatives and opportunities for this to be actually very good news for them, rather than necessarily being, uh, you know, letting them down and it being bad news. So that is another factor to really think about, uh, team involvement in the decision and the communication of the exit strategy and the exit or any announcements associated with the exit. So how does the preschool work? It's about a 12 to 15 minute uh, questionnaire. I simply supply a link and you go to, go to an online uh, questionnaire, personal readiness to exit, uh, assessing where you currently are. And you get a series of multiple choice questions, uh, which are the following factors are pushing you to consider exiting your business, for example. Uh, and then you simply choose out of the options, which is a major and minor factor in this particular question, um, and uh, slowly but surely go through a, as I say, 13 to 15 minute questionnaire. So that's just one example of one of the questions. And as a result of completing your uh, pre-score, you will fill in your contact details. And then as a result of that, you will get a an assessment of where you are and where your strengths and weaknesses are against those four factors that we talked about. And you'll also get a step-by-step -step personalized action plan for a happy and lucrative exit from your business. So please do let me know if you're interested in getting access to this and I will supply a link, uh, which it would be your personalized link uh, such that you uh, can get your scores and we can uh, talk about that in the context of where you are with your business, what the current value is via the value builder assessment, which is a separate questionnaire, and then thinking about how to grow and plan the exit from your business. Um, I think I mentioned that you get an overall uh, assessment, an overall score, which comes with that. So how ready are you to exit your business? What do you need to think about in relation to the business, but also what do you need to think about in terms of your own, your own mindset, your own personal circumstances, your own attitudes towards retirement, the timing of, reti uh, of your retirement. So that's been what we've been exploring today. There's four further webinars coming up. Next one, we'll look at driving annual profit. How can you grow your annual profit by 61%? per year, we'll have a look at what, uh, what drives that. Uh, then we'll have a look at those eight factors that I talked about that drive the current value of the business. Uh, then we look at exit strategy options, there are at least eight, eight to 10 exit strategy op options that you have, thinking about the pros and cons of those in your particular circumstance, and then getting into the kind of the anatomy of the deal and the, uh, the skills and expertise of professional people that buy businesses, what, tools and techniques and tricks do they use when it comes to buying businesses. Uh, so that is the series of webinars coming up after this. As I say, the next two are based on two of the elements that drive estimated value. One is the annual profit and growing that. 
uh, and the one after we'll be looking at uh, how you calculate and grow the multiple of that profit and that's therefore the value of your business uh, and that will be in a few weeks time friday the 31st focusing on profit growth that will be 12 noon so look forward to uh, seeing you then let me just check uh, whether we've got any uh, question let me just uh, move these things out of the way because i can't see okay so one question has come in here how do you define the income replacement value and where do you get three to five percent from so when it comes to any asset and, and if you speak to a financial advisor personal pension will be an example of this if you think about gradually taking money out of that asset over time then three to five percent is a typical range and that's what you use to therefore judge what the asset needs to be worth in order for you to draw down or bring out um, the current level of money that you take out the business so hence the point i made about if your business is giving you currently uh, 150,000 of, of, uh, of profit and you're taking out 100,000 pound, for example, um, then you need to sell it for 2 million in order to maintain that lifestyle. So please do get in touch if you want any further details on that. I'm just conscious of time. It is now 26 minutes past the hour. Uh, that's it from me for today's webinar. I hope it's been valuable. Uh, please do reach out if you want any further details. Kerry James at actioncoach.com. Uh, all my details are on my website and I will be in touch and I'll be sharing this recording on my website and on social media, etc. So until Friday the 31st of uh, January or maybe before, uh, thanks again for joining. Uh, all the best with your business and uh, see you soon. Bye for now.